Yay, the whip! Woohoo! Uh, yeah, the whip. It's uh, it's kind of cool. I like it. It's uh, it's probably one of my least favorite items in the game, but it's still pretty good. It, there's really no awful items in this game. I guess it sort of gives you the Indiana Jones vibe. You know, you get to use the whip, and uh, the whip in general. It was in. Uh, the previous Zelda game, before Skyward Sword, it was in Spirit Tracks for the Nintendo DS. Uh, not sure if I... I think I actually prefer the uh, the whip from Spirit Tracks over Skyward Sword. Uh, but it was still pretty good here. It's just that you use it a lot in the Ancient Cistern, but it's one of those items where uh, it doesn't have too many uses outside of, of the dungeon. The, there's still some optional use for it, so it's not as useless as, like, say, the spinner or the Dominion Rod from Twilight Princess. But, um, I think they could have done more with it, and they could have done a little more unique puzzles. I mean, a lot of the puzzles you see with the whip, it's basically the same puzzles you saw with the whip in Spirit Tracks. So, I mean, I was expecting them to do a little bit more. Uh, it's still kind of fun. Anyway, we want to sort of climb our way on up here, and you will find a treasure chest. Go ahead and open it, and you will get the... Dungeon map! Yay! Uh, the dungeon map will immediately pop up, and you'll realize that there are not too many rooms in general in this dungeon. There are two floors, although that's sort of misleading because uh, we're going to be adjusting the floors uh, in a sense. Uh, more about that in just a little bit. But this sort of fits the mold of, I'd say, the Skyview Temple, the Earth Temple, uh, and even the Lan Laneru Mining Facility to a lesser extent. Uh, the dungeons are fairly short. I mean, well, I shouldn't say short, because some of them are, they'll take you time, they'll take you half hour, 40 minutes, but they're small. There's not that many rooms. Uh, when you look back at, like, Twilight Princess, uh, for example, the water dungeon in there was, uh, the Lake Bed Temple. The Lake Bed Temple is gigantic in comparison to the Ancient Cistern. The Ancient Cistern is tiny, uh, when you compare them side by side in terms of, uh, just the pure amount of rooms and the pure size of them. Just the scope has been sort of more condensed, but it's more dense. There's more to do in a smaller uh, section. Um, not sure if that's for better or for worse. I think there's a uh, there's a middle ground that was not really reached. Uh, and in a lot of ways, Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword were kind of the opposite sides of the spectrum in terms of the pure size, both of the overworld, the size of the dungeons, pretty much everything. Uh, here's one of the more unique puzzles. You can actually use your whip through the gate to pull the lever. Uh, and do so, and then here is, uh, you'll find yourself in a room, and there's some Bokoblin archers in the distance, and there's also some uh, some choo-choo on the ground area. Um, I sort of was trying to show off something here, but I kept messing up. Um, what I was in intending to do was use the whip to uh, <laughs> grab the item from the Bokoblin. Uh, some of the Bokoblin, uh, I was just trying to show what they do. You can sort of like temporarily stun them. It's not really useful. Some of the enemies, like the Bokoblin, will have horns, like the ones that like call out. And uh, you can use the whip and actually uh, grab the items from them. In other cases, like the choo-choos here, and like the Bokoblin archers, the whip does absolutely nothing. So, uh, it, it's not useful against all items, all enemies. And similarly, it's not useful against the Dekobot. I guess I was just sort of experimenting just to show it off in the video. I think I realized I did it a little too much. Anyway, so this is another case of standard enemies. See, it would be one thing if you included an enemy like the Dekobaba, who you can already defeat it like six different times, six different ways using your shield, various sword techniques, bombs. Uh, you can stun it with the slingshot using the beetle. But it would be cool if you showed the same enemies, like in this case, Bokoblin and uh, Dekubaba. Uh, it would be cool if you showed them once again, like repeating them, but if the whip did something different to them, if it did something additional that uh, one of the previous items didn't do. In that case then, and strangely, it actually provides more depth to these particular enemies, and that would have been a lot of fun. Anyway, this puzzle is, this actually took me, uh, it made me think just a little bit. <laughs> I 
And it's, it's, this is another one of those cases where this is a very small room. There's really not that much. But, uh, you know, you gotta like, wander around and there's a couple puzzles, a couple of climbing. There's some action. You have to fight the different enemies. So this, this is the type of density that uh, I think a lot of previous Zelda games uh, didn't really have as much of. And uh, there's a particular room coming up in the near future that does this significantly better than even this room. And uh, I'll get to that one in a little bit. Anyway, swing on over and there's a couple Deku Baba for you to defeat. Here. So use uh, your method of choice. <laughs> and then uh, afterwards, you want to use the whip to grab onto the little uh, like water keyhole thingy. I forgot what those things are actually called, but uh, just the switch. Switch and lever, that's like the generic term to call almost anything in Zelda. <laughs> And uh, afterwards, the water will start flowing, so jump on in, and it'll create like a little whirlpool that'll suck you down to the floor below. I like that musical transition right there. <laughs> and in general, the, the basement of the ancient cistern, it's, it's pretty sweet. It's sort of like uh, the color scheme is just so different from the rest of the dungeon. And uh, uh, you're going to see there's a brand new enemy that we're going to meet that's uh, really cool. And uh, I just sort of like the feel. It's got that sort of, well, I don't want to spoil anything just yet. <laughs> but anyway, use the beetle, and you want to flip over. You want to cut off the scotulas, and the, the one in the middle will actually cause the lily pad to flip on over. So do just that. Uh, and here's another one of those creative ways to use the whip. You'll see there's something shining on the bulk of one. And that's actually a small key. So you'll have to use your whip through the bars, grabbing the key from the Bulkoblin Archer, and then retrieving it that way. I think something like that, that's a cool way, a cool use of the whip. Um, anyway, you go through the door here, and uh, there's a little scene that like gives you a glimpse through the bars. And uh, in the distance, we can see a treasure chest, but it's like all the way at the bottom of this pit, and there's all these like bones all over the place. And... Uh, Phi will mention there's an 85% probability that it contains a key. Okay, terrific. Um, I don't know. I don't really think that hurt. Phi usually gives you some very useless uh, pieces of information, and uh, I think this is no exception this time around. <laughs> anyway, you could defeat the archer if you'd like. Otherwise, just continue along the water. And uh, I don't know if this sort of defies physics a little bit since this is not even a full tube but it sucks you back upwards yeah anyway this is the particular room I was speaking about uh, moments ago uh, my first playthrough I spent a good maybe 10-15 minutes in this one room alone uh, just because there's so much to it and uh, you know there were some several consecutive puzzles that you needed to solve or I guess it's really one big puzzle that took a lot of time and um, I saw on the other end of the room there's one of those key type things that you need to use your whip to like spin and uh, I was trying to like get up onto that ledge and I got onto the other ledge and was trying to jump over and I couldn't do it and uh, so it took a lot of exploration throughout the room to, to figure out where exactly you know what you what you actually needed to do and uh, it was kind of uh, it's kind of cool this is a pretty sweet puzzle Anyway, the first step here is to go ahead and kill the uh, Quadro Baba, and then afterwards you want to jump down and cause this lily pad to flip over. What this does is it allows you to swim underneath this little pathway then. So, um, you know, it took me a little while to find that this actually existed. I didn't really realize it initially, but um, eventually I figured it out. And uh, underneath there's some uh, frolocks, so... Uh, for the most part, you can avoid them, although this is kind of a narrow area, so they might hit you, and if they explode, you might take some damage. Uh, but don't worry, it shouldn't be too bad. Afterwards, just swim on over, and uh, you can resurface here. Now, when you climb up the ladder here, you'll actually be right next to that little key switch that I was just mentioning momentarily, or well, moments ago. And um, so, I, initially, I was trying to reach this switch somehow from the area below, not knowing that, uh, well, you have to wait, so, you know, it made me think, it took me, you know, a good five minutes just 
messing around in this room. But eventually, you can turn that uh, you can turn that little switch, and this causes a water geyser to appear, sending that same lily pad that we were messing around with earlier, sending it floating upwards. Now we got to sort of uh, repeat what we just did moments ago and uh, get back up over to the higher ledge and uh, over to where we defeated that uh, Quadro Baba. Also, one thing I haven't really commented on, the music of the Ancient Cistern. I think uh, it's probably one of the better themes. I thought the, like, the Laneru Mining Facility theme was like kind of quirky and unique, but uh, I think the Ancient Cistern one is uh, it's more memorable, I'd say, than the... Uh, at least more so than the Skyview Temple. Although the music is, in general... A lot of the songs are very good, but not as many songs are very memorable, I should say, in comparison to most previous Zelda games. Anyway, there's a lever all the way up there, a little bar you gotta pull down, and uh, it's sort of like the previous ones, but this one is a little too high for you to jump up and grab. So, naturally, you'll have to use the dungeon item, the whip. Here we have some new enemies known as Fernix. These guys look very nice. They're huge, fire-breathing birds, yet they're absolutely pathetic. All you gotta do is just wait for it to, like, stick out its tail, use the whip and grab and pull them over. You know, I was expecting a lot from them when I first saw them in, like, the initial trailer. I thought they were, uh, I thought they were almost gonna be, like, a, re a reinvented version of, like, the Kargorox or something. And then, you know, just seeing them, they look epic, just like fire-breathing birds. It's, it's, it's kind of disappointing that one of the new enemies in this dungeon, the Phoenix, it's so basic, so, you know, easy to defeat. It, it, I mean, you have to use the dungeon item. I guess they're just trying to find more uses to use the whip. But, um, and furthermore, the Phoenix is, you only fight outside the ancient cistern. There's only a couple of them, and there's no variations of this particular enemy. So... I don't know. This is one of the examples of the enemies that uh, I think they could have done a little bit more. But uh, all right, that's enough complaining, Moss. You're doing too much. <laughs> uh, you want to crawl along the vines. Uh, if you notice, just momentarily, moments ago, I uh, defeated the Waltula on the other end. Otherwise, it's going to distract you. It's going to get in your way, and uh, you're going to—you're not going to be able to make it across the vines. You'll probably run out of stamina. Over here, you want to use your whip to pull down this large lever. And this causes that entire middle structure to drop. And then it actually drops right above where that key was. Remember, we, if, you, if you recall just a few moments ago, we, we were like glancing through a gate and we saw a key. And that uh, Fi had mentioned that key seems important. Or that, that treasure chest contains a key that seems important. Anyway, you also want to, you know, grab and latch onto this keyhole, as this creates an, a water geyser, making uh, making it easier for you to uh, to reach the higher ledge once again. Anyway, uh, now that we've lowered or we've adjusted the large structure in the center of the dungeon, uh, that's going to be our next destination. So go ahead and swim on over, jump on over, and uh, re-enter the middle structure. Since everything is shifted, we're actually the floors are a little off now. So if you just jump down to the floor where we fought the mini boss, or all the way to the bottom, I should say, you can exit through this door and it'll take you to a new area. And we'll cover that in the next video.